the big data world if you take any project or any use case in the big data world there will be three phases you can say three phases of data three phases of data flow okay are three stages of the data flow that we call as simply a pipeline okay pipeline that means how the data is flowing from one end to another end okay so that is called as simply data pipeline we call it as a pipeline so from one end to another end how the data is flowing that is going to form a pipeline and where we start from actually where the data pipeline is starting from and where that is going to end that's what we have to understand here so as i told you that mainly it consists of three stages uh, the first step will be called as what you know data ingestion the first stage generally will be called as what data ingestion and second will be called as data pre-processing and third is called as data analytics okay these are the three steps that are going to be there in any generally these are general common you know steps or uh, stages that we are that are going to be there in a big data pipeline okay data ingestion pre-processing or cleansing and data analytics so what are these steps and uh, what are all the tools big data tools that we are going to use and what is the in which phase or in which stage this park is going to come okay and we are, what are all the phases we can use park okay that's all we shall try to understand and uh, first coming to the first step that is called as data ingestion so data ingestion is something like you know what uh, when you take a client you know we work for a client right so we need to ask the client or we need to ask the client that where you are going to maintain the data okay in our processing in in, under, in our all the projects or applications data is going to uh, play the role right without data we can't do anything so with the first question is where is that you are going to maintain the data that's the first thing we need to ask the question to any client if you are starting any project so where the data is maintained or available you can say that available where is the data available so the data may be available generally nowadays people or the clients they you know can you tell me guys where the data is available if I, if I am running a, some company, let's say if I am running a company, if I am maintaining some data, okay, so what are the storage systems where the data can be maintained? RDBMS. Yeah, RDBMS is one of the storage systems, okay. Cloud. Cloud. Now, most of the most of the clients or most of the companies are storing the data in the cloud. They are not storing in their premises. The story is even it is RDBMS, okay. So these cloud services have, okay, mainly I can say that instead of storing RDBMS, I can say premises in the company premises or in the cloud, the servers, servers in the sense machines, okay, servers on premises or on cloud. So nowadays, no one is going, most almost 90% or 95% of the people are going with cloud only cloud servers are cloud uh, the data in the cloud so the demand uh, so in the cloud uh, we have cloud providers what are all the cloud providers we, uh, we have today as of today the popular ones are aws okay amazon web services and uh, gcp guru cloud platform and azure there are still many other but these are the popular ones okay aws gcp and azure so these uh, cloud providers are providing all the services guys almost all the services that are needed for an industry okay so for industry what are all the storage services compute services you can write what are all the services they provide is storage compute and uh, what uh, intelligence almost all we have many 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 networking web service web services web services the many many uh, services they are providing almost 
I think IWS GC for providing 60, 60 to 70, in between 60 to 70 services, different services. So like uh, coming to storage, uh, like uh, RDBMS, S3, and uh, Azure, is, uh, Azure is providing the storage called Blob Storage, and GCP providing the storage called as uh, Google uh, Cloud Storage. So each service, each service, each cloud provider is pro providing storage services, complete computing services, intelligence services, uh, and uh, web services, network services. Almost they're providing almost all the services that are required for any industry. Okay, now so the project that we are working in our company the client is maintaining the data in s3 actually they're maintaining the data in s3 what is this s3 this is s3 yeah can you tell me what is s3 this is a this is a storage service storage service a cloud storage service okay storage service in AWS cloud okay so they are using AWS in AWS the storage service name is called as what s3 okay s3 is s3 has a full form actually that is simple storage service now data ingestion is actually about pulling the data from some some storage system into Hadoop environment pulling the data from uh, external storage systems to Hadoop storage system. Okay, this was the meaning actually uh, in the in big data world. Data ingestion is pulling the data from external storage systems to Hadoop storage system. Can you tell me guys why Hadoop storage system is used actually? What is the first system of Hadoop? That is HDFS. Okay, that is HDFS. Okay. Now, this data ingestion is almost not required nowadays. Can you tell me why? The thing is, the data must be somewhere, you know, the data must be somewhere so that the rate data must be on the reliable storage system. You know, a flexible storage system or reliable. Okay. Uh, so, in big data world, in the early days, in the early days, in the big data world, HDFS was only the storage system which was very flexible. I'm giving, I'm repeating the statement, guys. In the early days of big data in Hadoop, okay, big, dealing with big data projects, HDFS was the only storage system which was very flexible. But later on, many storage systems have come into uh, market, okay, like S3. That's what I told you. S3 and Blob Storage, Google Cloud Storage. These are the different storage systems that perform very well, uh, even compared to that of HDFS. I don't say that HDFS is not that comfortable, but still, uh, the people are going with S3 and all these. So now, data ingestion process might not be required nowadays. That is pulling the data external storage into Hadoop storage that is not required. What was used to be there in the early days is client uh, used to maintain data in their servers on premises. Okay, I have a company in my own company in my premises. I have some servers and the data is there on their servers. Now I want my data to be processed. That is, I want my data to be analyzed for my business improvements. Okay. Then what shall I do? Then uh, I approach uh, one company uh, to do this. Then I will ask. So if the if the company uh, the company uh, will ask to move the data to provide the data to some flexible storage system so that we can do the analysis. That's what we do. Okay. Now this is moving the pulling the data from from uh, premises servers the data that was on the servers on the premises to to hdfs okay pulling the data from the client to premises servers premises it can be premises or it can be any remote 
I can tell you not exactly on premises. It can be on remote also. Okay, client, but the not, you know, the, the data will be initially first is to used to be stored in the client servers. The, whether the servers can be RDMA servers, and the servers can be some mainframe servers. The servers can be some simply log servers, web servers, different types of uh, servers, different types of where the data can be reposited. And pulling the data into HDFA that was called as mainly the data ingestion. Okay, so why uh, data is being moved to or pulled into HDFS? Because the data can be used for transactional purpose but not for analysis purpose. So if you want to do analysis, the data has to be moved to a flexible storage system that is a distributed storage system. Okay, mm -hmm. because of that reason, the data used to be moved to HDFS. So instead of HDFS, now directly the clients itself, the clients itself, they are maintaining the data in the cloud. Or nowadays, this data ingestion is might not be required in most of the applications, most of the big data applications. Just we need to know where the data is. So, but most of the company's clients are now maintaining the data in the cloud only. So the data will be there in the cloud. Uh, you know uh, securely and everything everything is you know no data loss nothing will be there the cloud services are such powerful uh, today uh, that's it okay so, so this data ingestion might not be required we don't require actually these days that's what but we need to understand what data is so s3 is one of the storage service and um, in azure uh, we have i think blob storage the name of the storage service in azure is called as blob and one more we have that is uh, google cloud storage this is a google cloud service google cloud storage service and this is azure storage service likewise uh, it's up to the uh, client which cloud services they are using uh, it is up to them okay, it is up to them next step is now what is that we have to do let's say that the data is already there in one of the uh, clouds cloud storage systems s3 or blob or google cloud now what is that we have to do now what is that we have to do the next step data pre-processing or data cleansing you know the client maintains that you know in what format the data can be generally second i continue in this only in what format the data can be okay formats of data formats of data so the data format can be i told you that uh, structured or uh, semi structured or unstructured it can be in any format generally okay so unstructured structured semi structured so structured in the sense mainly the storage systems will store the data in structured form can you tell me the storage systems where the data can be in structured uh, databases like databases yeah yeah do we have database services in uh, cloud storage cloud services remember guys here these three yeah. or yeah these s3 or blob storage or google cloud storage these are not rdbms these are file systems like hdfs we don't call them as file systems we call those uh, technically speaking these are called as object st storage systems actually but they act same same as what file systems okay a file system is different from a rdbms okay so uh, here in cloud not only these services storage services we have rdbms storage services also yeah, cassandra uh, yes and, uh, we uh, have red, redshift is there uh, uh big query in the cloud uh, in gcp google cloud storage we have uh, what we call as uh, BigQuery, it is popular nowadays. BigQuery is something like uh, Hive, like we have Hive, we have BigQuery in uh, Google, 
Google Cloud service. Okay, so RDMS storage services are also there. There we can have MySQL, Oracle, all these. Not only just all these, open this traditional RDMS also will be there. The storage service also will be there. Okay, so if the data is in this service, let's say S3 or Blob or Google Cloud, the data can be if it, it, they are nothing but they are same as that of file systems so that data they can have some text files uh, csv files or json files except the data can be in any file format but when we come to rdms the data will be in structured format right any rdms that will be in structured format right structured in the sense uh, the data will be mainly in tables okay and coming to semi structured csv or json or xml mainly these three can be called come under what uh, semi structure sometimes csv also can be called as structured but i uh, call i put that into the category of semi structured only so csv json xml means these are called uh, what called as uh, semi structured okay unstructured there is a uh, confusion actually to many guys that videos and audios are called as unstructured no, they think like that. Okay, unstructured is not defined by if it is audio or video or text. Okay, unstructured is uh, described or defined by if you're not able to organize the data. If the data is not properly organized. Okay, if you're not able to understand any data, you know, if you have a table, we can understand easily because these the tables, these are rows. We can do that analysis easily. If it is some random text file, a flat file, you know, analysis cannot be done directly on that. Why? Because the data is not organized properly. Okay. So first understand that uh, what you call as unstructured is not just about audio files or video files. Okay. Unstructured defines non-proper organized organized data. Or you can say like this, non-proper organized data. So this is going to be if there's the data, if there is a data which is not organized properly, simply called as unstructured. That's it. Very, very simple, guys. Okay. So, like this, we can have three, uh, what you call as formats of three different formats of, no, not formats, actually, categories of data structured, semi structured, and unstructured. So, in the storage systems, what are the storage systems we have here? These storage systems can store structured, semi structured, as well as unstructured. Any structure of the, the cloud service can can store any format, any category of data in them.